Hello, I'm K.R. Zender, and in this video I'll be presenting efficient multitask learning via iterated single task transfer. In this work, we seek to answer the key question of when can single task transfer improve sample efficiency over learning many tasks from scratch. We choose to limit ourselves to a deep RL transfer primitive that transfers a policy from a single base task to a single target task at a time. This transfer primitive is proximal policy optimization, a well-studied DRL algorithm with as few modifications as necessary to make a viable RL transfer algorithm. In particular, we found that proximal policy optimization without modifications rapidly destroys behavior early in training because its updates have very high variance. In order to combat this problem, we free train the value function of the base policy on the target task before performing any policy updates. We call this pre-training value function warm-up. We chose to focus on the MetaWorld MT10 benchmark, which contains 10 tasks, each of which randomize the positions of goals and object locations every episode. Furthermore, we seek a method that achieves a minimum level of performance in each task, a much more difficult objective than reaching an average level of performance across all tasks. Here is a tree representation of a sequence of transfers that would allow efficiently solving the MetaWorld MT10 benchmark. First, we begin by training two policies from scratch, represented as arrows leading off of the empty circle. Then, we repeatedly apply our transfer primitive along each of these directed edges outwards to acquire the remaining tasks. In order to find an efficient curriculum tree, we begin by computing something we call the transfer cost matrix, which measures the number of time steps required to acquire each target task from each base task, as well as the number of time steps required to acquire each task from scratch. In this visual representation of the transfer cost matrix, black cells never finish transferring. To convert the transfer cost matrix to an optimal curriculum tree, we assume the transfer cost is not affected by how the base policy was trained. We compute the directed minimum spanning tree on a fully connected graph, using the values of the transfer cost matrix as edge weights. Then, we use a rejecting rule to remove edges that fail to transfer until we find a tree that transfers as predicted. For example, here one tree has two edges rejected, which are then replaced with the next best viable edges. This plot shows the number of samples required to reach a given level of performance for various types of curriculum trees. At the bottom, a dashed blue line shows the total edge cost of optimal curriculum trees. Above that line, in solid green, is the number of time steps required for training from scratch. In the 90-95% to 95 success rate range, the actual time required to run an optimal curriculum tree dips below the from scratch time, at most representing an opportunity to improve sample efficiency by roughly 30%. However, the rest of this plot also shows how critical it is to use a well-chosen curriculum tree. This average curriculum trees require significantly more time to train compared to training from scratch. We've shown that given an optimal curriculum tree, iterated transfer can improve on sample efficiency. However, finding the transfer cost matrix, which we used to compute the optimal curriculum tree itself, required running every possible transfer, as well as training each task from scratch. Clearly, this is prohibited from using this method in practical cases. Next, we would like to present an algorithm that performs inference on the value of the transfer cost matrix in order to provide an effective and usable multitask method that relies on single task transfer. We call this method inference transfer because it infers the contents of the transfer cost matrix. This algorithm begins by using behavioral cloning to train a weak policy for each task and then evaluates those policies on all other tasks in order to form an initial belief across the values of the transfer cost matrix. Then, while the algorithm hasn't solved all of the tasks, the algorithm repeatedly samples edge costs from our belief distribution, computes a curriculum tree from that sample of edge costs, and chooses an edge from that tree, then runs a single step of our transfer primitive on the chosen edge, and finally updates our belief distribution. Running a full evaluation of this algorithm would be extremely computationally intensive. However, we can simulate its performance by using a set of prior runs, which were used to compute the same transfer cost matrix. This plot shows the predicted efficiency of inference transfer relative to training from scratch. The gold dashed line shows the number of environment steps used to train each task in MP10 from scratch and 90% success. The blue bars show the result of running inference transfer 1,000 times on a data from a fixed set of runs to reach the same level of success. 
Note that in most cases, inference transfer significantly improves sample efficiency, reaching near the best possible sample efficiency predicted by the curriculum frontier. Thank you for listening.